This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora and welcome to Thursday's Economy Watch where we follow the economic events and trends that affect New Zealand. I'm David Chaston and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz and today we leave with news the northern holiday season can still spring a few economic and market surprises. First in the US, mortgage applications last week were a little change from a week ago, down a half a percent, and that is despite mortgage rates falling for a fourth consecutive week to 6.44%. And their ben- for their benchmark 30-year fixed loan. That is its lowest level since April 2023, and interestingly, is the same rate that applied 30 years ago in October 1993. If you took out one of these loans back then, and you had to renew it today, the rate would be exactly the same. In their government bond market, the US Treasury had a five-year bond tender today, and it was very well supported again. There was a massive hundred billion US dollars more offered than they accepted. It gave investors a median yield of 3.59%, down from 4.05% at the equivalent event a month ago. Then bond rally is extending, so perhaps it's no surprise investors are so enthusiastic. Lower rates also mean the pressure on their federal deficit is less than it would otherwise be. On average, the US federal government pays about 3.35% over all its debt. So today's tender is approaching that average again. Motorists are paying 12% less for petrol than they did at this time last year, and on their way home they'll be paying 4.1% less than they did a month ago. Energy inflation is not a thing there at the moment. Today will also be a signature day on US equity markets after Wall Street closes. NVIDIA will release its results and investors will then know if their sky-high valuation is reasonable. And Berkshire Hathaway may hit a capitalization of one trillion US dollars, putting it in a very small and exclusive club of seven, all the others big tech companies. In China, the levels of dissent are rising as their economy wavers, although the rises are containable by Beijing. In the year to October, they are up 16% according to detailed monitoring. Most current dissent is in the south, in Guangdong province, but the big central provinces that include Beijing are also seeing rises in dissent. The October monthly levels may end up being the highest of the year. Almost half relate to workforce issues and a fifth relate to homeowner stress. And in some parts of China, stress is more than citizen protest. In giant Chengdu, the capital of Shizhuan province, they are in an extended and crushing heat wave. Electricity is being rationed, with many companies holding production after the local government imposed sharp restrictions as their power supply buckled. And Australia released their monthly CPI indicator yesterday. It rose 3.5% in July from a year ago, down from June's 3.8%, but above the consensus of 3.4%. It was the lowest figure since March, as electricity prices fell sharply following the extended Energy Bill Relief Fund rebate. Inflation remains outside the RBA's target range of 2 to 3%, and that electricity component is hiding some of the higher prices elsewhere. Don't expect Aussie rate cuts any time soon. The US Treasury 10-year yield is now just on 3.84% and unchanged from yesterday. And the price of gold will start today down $13 from yesterday at $2,506 an ounce. And oil prices are down a dollar at $74.50 a barrel in the US, while the international Brent price is just over $77.50 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar starts today down 20 basis points from yesterday at 62.3 US cents. Against the Aussie, we're unchanged at 92 Australian cents. Against the euro, we're up 20 basis points at 56.1 euro cents. That all means our trade-weighted index starts today at 70.1 and unchanged from yesterday. And the Bitcoin price starts today at $58,877 and down another 4.7% from this time yesterday. Volatility over the past 24 hours has been high, at just on plus or minus 3.7%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes, and you can get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston. And we'll do this again on Monday because I'm taking a short winter break.